So next we have uh, Elizabeth Grimm and Andrew Hatfield talking about Hamilton, the city of four tough uh, K2 union, three K1 free graphs. So if you'd like to begin. All right, so uh, yeah, we're talking about Hamilton, the city of four tough K2 union, three K1 free graphs. So to start, uh, we'll talk about some definitions first. We say a graph G is Hamiltonian if there exists a cycle which contains every vertex of G. We say G is K2 union 3K1 free if it contains no induced subgraph, which is isomorphic to K2 union 3K1, which is um, K2 is a single edge and 3K1 are three isolated vertices. We say G is T tough if for each cut set S of G, we have T times the number of uh, components in G minus S is uh, less than or equal to the size of S, the number of vertices in S. Um, and then we say the toughness of G denoted by tau is the maximum value of T for which G is T tough if G is not complete. Otherwise it's defined to be infinity. So in 1973, Schwatal introduced this concept of toughness and conjectured that there exists a constant T such that every T tough graph is Hamiltonian. Uh, this conjecture has been proven for special, like certain kinds of graphs, 2K2 free, P2 union P3, uh, K2 union 2K1 free, planar portal graphs, and so on. But in general, it remains open. Uh, here are some results that we're going to be using in our proof. First by Bauer, uh, let G be a T tough graph on at least three vertices with minimum degree greater than N over T plus one minus one then G is Hamiltonian. And then by Lee, let R be an induced subgraph of P4, K1 union P3, or K2 union 2K1, then every R free one tough graph on at least three vertices is Hamiltonian. So with those results, we are able to prove that if G is a four tough K2 union 3K1 free graph on at least three vertices, then G is Hamiltonian. To prove this, our method was to consider a longest cycle C, um, and then we can first claim that uh, C has at least four and over five vertices. Then we can claim that the number of components of G minus the vertices of C is at most three and that each component is trivial. Um, and then it's a matter of inserting the remaining vertices into C to get a longer cycle and a contradiction. So uh, first we wanna show that this cycle C has at least four N over five vertices and we split that up into two cases. Uh, the first of which we consider uh, vertices U, V in the graph, which are adjacent and have this, uh, their combined neighborhood, neighborhood of U along with the neighborhood of V is less than or equal to N over five. Uh, so we call that set S. And uh, we want to say first that the number of components of G minus S is exactly three. We first know that G minus S cannot have all trivial components or we'd be able to uh, use the tough definition to get a contradiction to the four toughness of the graph. So we know a non-trivial component must exist. And then along with U and V, we have at least three. And if there existed another component, we'd be able to take K2 from the non-trivial along with U, V, and a vertex from the other proposed component and get K2 union 3, K1, which violates the freeness of the graph. So we know there's exactly three components and we'll call that a component, that third component D. Um, we can say that D is K2 union K1 free, else if it had K2 union K1, we will take that along with U and V to get K2 union 3, K1. So next we get this inequality, which we found to be true because if we took uh, the opposite of the inequality strictly less than, we got a contradiction to the independence number of the graph. So we have this inequality is true. So what we can do uh, with this inequality, uh, we can use Bauer's theorem to get a lower bound on N to be N is greater than 45. And then we know that the size of this component D is uh, at least four and over five minus two. And so that inequality gives us that the minimum degree of D is at least N over two. So by Dirac's theorem, we can say that this uh, component D is Hamiltonian. So then we can use uh, Menger's theorem, which says if we have a K connected 
graph, there exist K internally disjoint paths from one subset of the vertices to another uh, distinct vertex subset. So in this case, we want to find two uh, disjoint paths from U to D. So we go from U, we have to go through S into D, use the uh, Hamiltonian connectedness of D to get out back into U. So we know that this cycle that we just constructed uh, has at least the size of D plus three, which gives us the um, lower bound that we wanted on the cycle. So next for case two, we consider again, um, non-adjacent U and B, uh, but this time their combined neighbor set is strictly greater than N over five. So in this case, we um, consider a vertex U of minimum degree, which would have at most N over five minus one uh, by Bauer. Then we consider this graph G1, which is defined to be G minus the closed neighborhood of U, which is the neighborhood of U along with U itself. Uh, and we first claim that this G1 is K2 union 2K1 free, or else we'd be able to take uh, the copy of that in G1 along with U and get K2 union 3K1. Uh, next, we can say, uh, we can assume that G is not one tough. Um, if it was one tough, then by Lee's theorem, we'd be able to conclude that G1 is Hamiltonian, and then that Hamiltonian cycle would give us the cycle that we want of the certain length. So we assume it's not uh, Hamiltonian. So then we consider W a tough set, which means that it's a cut set that gives us the toughness bound that we want. And so we want to claim that the number of components of G1 minus W is exactly two. We know it's at least two since W is a cut set. Um, but if we, uh, if we consider that all of the components are trivial, then we get another violation to the four toughness of the graph. So we know there's at least one non-trivial component in G1 minus W. If there were more than two, we would take an edge from the known non-trivial and then two vertices from the other components and get K2 union 2K1. Um, so we know that there are exactly two components. Something else we can say is that the size of W is exactly one. Um, since we know that the number of components of G1 minus W is exactly two, then that uh, toughness uh, inequality tells us that the size of W is strictly less than two, so it has to be one. So we have these uh, two components, uh, call them D1 and D2. We first want to claim that each uh, D sub I is non-trivial, or else uh, if one was trivial, we take that trivial vertex um, and then consider the neighborhood of U and along with the neighborhood of V. Um, its size would be uh, less than uh, n over five, but for that kind of neighborhood, um, that size, that uh, neighborhood S, um, in this case is strictly greater than n over five. So we get that contradiction to our case assumption. So we know each is non-trivial. And we also can say that each d sub i is complete or else we would have um, a missing edge between some pair of vertices. We could take that pair of vertices along with an edge in the other component and get K2 union uh, 2K1. So we have uh, these two facts. So we can use Manker's theorem again now to find uh, a long cycle. So we can go from D1 over to D2, hit all the vertices in D2 because it's complete and therefore Hamiltonian, and then back and do the same to D1. So we get this cycle that's at least of length, uh, the size of D1 plus the size of D2 plus two, which gives us the same lower bound uh, for N over five that we wanted. So for the rest of the proof, we'll focus on inserting these vertices that are outside of the cycle into the cycle. Um, so if we consider some component H outside of the cycle um, by the four connected or by the four toughness of G, uh, we know it has at least eight neighbors on the cycle uh, and we'll call those X1 up to X8. The first thing we wanna note is that no vertex in H is adjacent to two consecutive vertices on C, um, as you could easily enlarge the cycle by traveling up into that component H and then back um, along the cycle. Uh, contradicting, of course, the fact that C is the longest cycle. The next thing we want to note is that the X I sub pluses or X sub I pluses um, here that denotes the immediate successor on the cycle of these X1, X2, etc. Here, X1 plus is the vertex directly after X1 on the cycle. Um, these are independent. Um, for example, if we had some connection between X4 and X5 plus, or X4 plus and X5 plus, we could draw the cycle in a manner like this. 
Um, this generalizes um, for every other kind of edge you could have. Um, so these, these must be independent, uh, which is pretty important for the rest of the proof. We want to prove two things about the components of G outside of C. The first thing we want to show is that every component um, is trivial. Um, if not, and we had some edge in this component H, we could take this edge along with this independent set X1 plus, X2 plus, X3 plus, and we get a copy of K, uh, K2 union 3K1, um, which gives a contradiction, of course. So we know that each component outside of the cycle is trivial. Now we want to show that there's at most three of them. Um, this argument is a little bit more involved, but the, the general idea is that um, if we assume that there's four X, Y, Z, and W, for example, we could find three edges um, and, and label things such that X is adjacent to U1, Y is adjacent to U2, Z is adjacent to U3. Um, and then we would ha have this vertex W um, that must be adjacent as well to U1 and U2. So we can enlarge the cycle in a manner like this. So we know that the cycle has at least N minus three vertices. Um, so it's pretty close to Hamiltonian. Um, and we, have, of course, now assume that, that the cycle is not Hamiltonian. Otherwise, we're finished. So we return to this familiar setup where instead of this big component H, we know it's just one vertex now. Again, we label the neighbors as x1, x2, etc., and consider these successors x1 plus, x2 plus, all the way up to um, x8, uh, x8 plus. Um, again, we note that these xi pluses are independent by the same argument we used before. Uh, on this slide, it's an important lemma saying that if we have some vertices on this like outside segment of the cycle, we'll talk more about this later, but the segment between x5 plus and x1, um, any sort of crossing that arises from vertices like this, for example, you can see here specifically an example for i is equal to one and j is equal to two for this lemma, um, gives a longer cycle. Uh, and by a symmetric argument, you can you can write the same thing for the um, predecessors along the cycle. So just the key takeaway from this slide is that crossings give longer cycles, and we'll use this for um, later cases. So from here, we'll assume that this outside segment that I've highlighted here in uh, purple is larger than the other. And if not, of course, we'll relabel things as necessary. Uh, and so therefore, it has at least half of the vertices on the cycle. Excuse me. We'll label the vertices in this cycle as x5 plus, and then y1 is the vertex directly after x5, y2, et cetera, up to y sub t, and then x1. So we know that x5 plus is adjacent to y1. Um, therefore, at least two more of these x y pluses must be adjacent by the k2 union 3k1 freeness of g. Uh, next, our goal is to show that uh, y2 could have no connections in the set. If we assume that it did have some connection, um, by the same argument, it would have to have at least three. So we see that this set only has five vertices. Uh, in each of these sets, the intersections um, has to be at least one. So there has to be at least some vertex here that is adjacent to both y1 and y2. Um, if that vertex is not x sub 3 plus, then everything is easy. We get a crossing, and we can use the lemma we described before. However, in the case where we do have x3 plus, we have to find it a slightly different contradiction. Um, uh, you can see kind of in this example, there's no crossing in that case. So if however, you're... yes. Oh, sorry, if you yeah. want to take a few minutes to wrap up, uh, if you want to leave time for some questions. Yeah, we're almost done. Sorry, let me speak through the okay. rest of this. Um, so in this case, we have no crossing and we can find a slightly different contradiction. Um, so each of these, uh, Y, each of these x sub i plus are not adjacent to y sub 2. Um, so at least half of these satisfy this condition. Um, so this, and also, as you can see here, this set y sub 2, y sub 4, et cetera, all the even y sub i's with some nuance with regards to the parity. Um, this set is independent. So since the set is independent, it has to have size smaller than the independence number. Um, so we get the bound n is less than or equal to 30. However, by Bauer's theorem, um, and the eight connectedness of the graph, we get n is greater than or equal to 45, which gives a contradiction. So that completes the proof. Um, the cycle C must be Hamiltonian. Um, for future work, you could consider three tough graphs, which we actually were almost able to prove, um, as well as other classes of graphs on five or more vertices, or of course, more general proofs um, for, for all graphs. Um, does anyone have any questions?
Oh, I was I was gonna ask um, what like how did you like how did the the whole like um, uh, K two union three K one free kind of condition come up come up because it seemed like a little like so it's been studied yeah it's kind of out there um, it's kind of a weird graph to choose um, it's been studied for other let me see if I can find this it's been studied for other um, classes of graphs on slightly lower vertices. So for example, um, a lot of subgraphs induce on four vertices, um, a mm -hmm. couple induce on five, like P2 union P3, um, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So um, a natural one to choose on, on five vertices is K2 union 3K1. Mm -hmm. um, does, that, does that answer your question? It's, I... It just arises from, from yeah. previous research. Um, it was something that our, our Kind of our research advisor and professor had worked on as well. Um, okay. She has a result here for um, these P2 union P3 graphs, free, free graphs. Okay. So, okay. So, kind of something she suggested to us. It's kind of along the same lines. You can use similar techniques um, for sure. Okay. Yeah, that, that kind of answers it some. Yeah. Like, if I get into the weeds, I'll see it. Any other questions? I have a sort of non-mathematical question, which is, um, so you both work together on this um, with your advisor. That's really cool. So how did you like start collaborating? Like, did you decide you were gonna collaborate or what was the process? So it was, this is actually done for um, kind of like a semester research class. Um, it was our advisors, I think first time running this class. Um, so she kind of had a list of problems um, and Elizabeth and I kind of found the same problems interesting. Um, so we decided that we'd work together on this one specifically. Correct me if I'm wrong, Elizabeth. Okay, I got the head nod. We're in the clear. Awesome. And thank you, uh, Fatima, for adding your thesis slides. I don't know if everyone saw that. Um, so we can look at them at our leisure. Yeah, um, so let's let's thank our, the, our speakers again. A great talk.